We have just received a major update on the upcoming NVIDIA RTX 1490 graphics card from a source with an excellent track record when it comes to NVIDIA leaks. The new information includes precise specs as well as updated release date. RTX 1490 appears to be launching much sooner than we thought. In this video, I combined all of the new as well as already known information about RTX 1490, including specs, 4K, 8K and ray tracing performance in games, comparing it to RTX 3000 series cards, as well as release date and price. But before that, a quick message from a sponsor. Buy your Windows 10 or 11 key for less from cdkeyoffer.com at the link in the description below. Use code IV20 to get a 25% discount that brings the price down to as low as $16. You can securely check out with PayPal and receive your Windows key in minutes, ready to be activated on your PC. Let's start with RTX 4090 specs. 4090 will use AD102 GPU based on Ada Lovelace microarchitecture. The full AD102 configuration features 18,432 CUDA cores with 96 MB of cache. However, RTX 4090 will use a cut-down version of this GPU with just 16,128 CUDA cores. That is 12.5% fewer cores. This leaves room for RTX 4090 Ti to be a lot better and actually make sense to buy. Also, we cannot rule out a possibility of the new RTX Titan returning at $2500 plus using the full AD102 GPU. Certainly, Nvidia will not say no to making higher profit margins from its chips. RTX 4090 will be manufactured on TSMC 4 nanometer node and equipped with 24 GB of 21 GB per second GDDR6X memory. The good news is that TDP will be 450 watts instead of previously rumored 600 watts. 450 does sound more reasonable and realistic if you ask me. However, it does not mean that there will not be a higher tier 600 watt TDP graphics card. This high power configuration could be reserved for RTX 4090 Ti or Titan, which actually makes a lot of sense. Because if 4090 uses 600 watts, then how much power will 4090 Ti use? 700? 8? 900 watts? That would be absolutely ludicrous. So, 450 watts makes a lot of sense. The new rumored release date for the RTX 4090 is mid-July. That is just two months away from now. So, if you were planning to buy a high-end graphics card, then it may be a good idea to hold off that purchase, if you don't have to have it right now. Chip manufacturing prices as well as shipping costs have increased in the last couple of years. So, expect RTX 4090 to cost above $1500. I think it will be somewhere in the range between $16 to $1700. That is, unless AMD comes out swinging with lower prices for its next generation of RX 7000 series graphics cards. But I think it is unlikely because AMD is also looking to improve its profit margins. Now let's talk about the performance. The source states that RTX 4090 will double the performance over RTX 3090. Maybe that is the case for some applications. However, I am still very skeptical that the performance will double in gaming. So, I side with other sources that state around 80% improvement over RTX 3090. Here's the rough estimation of how I see RTX 4090 stacking up against the current generation of graphics cards in 4K, 8K and ray tracing. Ray tracing will be a big focus for RTX 4000 series. 4090 ray tracing performance target is over double compared to RTX 3090. Expect amazing looking AAA games such as Metro Exodus to be able to run at over 200 FPS using maxed out ray tracing quality at 1440p resolution without enabling DLSS. Resident Evil Village maximum graphics quality with ray tracing set to ultra at 1440p should run at close to 300 FPS. And even graphically intensive titles such as Watch Dogs Legion will be able to run at 120 plus FPS with RTX on. 
8K gaming may be possible in some less demanding AAA games running at 60 FPS average. However, I don't expect 4090 to be able to run more demanding games such as Cyberpunk 2077 or Watch Dogs Legion in 8K resolution natively. DLSS will be required. By the way, Nvidia is working on DLSS 3.0. Yet another improvement to an already good image upscaling tech is very welcome in my opinion. I think that DLSS, FSR and XESS image upscaling technologies are the future. They will open up 4K gaming to mid-range GPUs and 8K gaming to high-end GPUs. 4K gaming on an RTX 4090 will be a different story. It should comfortably run most AAA games at high frame rates, 178 FPS average. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the most GPU demanding games right now. Even so, expect to see about 87 FPS average on high quality preset. That is a massive jump from a 48 FPS average on RTX 3090. Rainbow Six Siege represents easier to run games on this list. With 387 FPS average, it brings competitive gaming to 4K resolution. So, with the arrival of RTX 4090, it will actually make more sense to own a 240Hz 4K monitor. Both products are not out yet, but will be by the end of this year. Other AAA games will also run very well, 119 FPS average in Assassin's Creed Valhalla on ultra high preset. I expect to see around 140 FPS average in Far Cry 6 using ultra quality preset. Watch Dogs Legion almost reaches 120 FPS on ultra quality. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one of the older but still amazing looking titles that should run at around 180 FPS. If you still haven't experienced an amazing story of Horizon Zero Dawn, then RTX 4090 will allow you to do that at 165 FPS on Ultimate Graphics preset. Hopefully, Sony will release the Horizon sequel on PC soon as well. F1 2021 represents racing simulators on this list. Ray tracing is enabled in this game by default, so this chart is heavily affected by it. However, ray tracing is exactly where RTX 4090 will shine, reaching close to 200 FPS average. What do you think about it? I am waiting to read your comments. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.